Hey everybody, Big Al's right here, and this is Juddy of course, and you know what we're here for. It's another Memories of the Hunt's Past. You've seen the videos of the 1995 squirrel season uh, with Jared, and of course we introduced Dink and we done a 19, but it wasn't really a 1995, it was Memory Hunt's Past, all me, you, and Dink all reminiscing. Yeah. And now we're doing 1995 again, and it's uh, the... Uh, uh, buck season and I wrote some stuff down because I can't remember all this real good and that's one reason why I want a big owl here uh, it's buck season now uh, we had the October uh, Jared and Brandon at camp you've seen that already uh, Jared at that time was too young to take deer hunting he was only 10 mm -hmm. I did remember you know, check on that he was only 10 years old when we took him squirrel hunting up to camp so I took my oldest son, Brandon. Now Brandon was 15. I can't remember why he didn't go when he was 13 or 14. He may have got grounded. I can't remember. I know one year he got grounded. Right. Uh, and I wouldn't take him. But he was 15. He just turned 15 that October. And uh, so this was going to be his first deer hunt. I made the mistake by sending him out 15 years old with a 410 shotgun and slugs. Now he hunted right beside me. He'd never been up on the mountain. He'd never been up there. Uh, I don't even think we went up our squirrel hunting in October with him. We stayed around the Allegheny Trail yeah. and stuff like that. Yep. So he'd never been up on the mountain, so he sat right with me. And of course I was using, I think, my 30-06. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, This was the year that uh, Big Alvin, Big Al, <laughs> Big Al harvested his nine point buck. And uh, it was also uh, the first year that we actually didn't drive the bus up on the mountain to hunt. Uh, that spring, mm -hmm. we had talked to the owner of Ted Mike's campground, Harold Brown, told me we wanted a lot. He didn't have one ready. And he let us go on what he had that he called overnight launch. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, you can park your bus there until I get your uh, campsite ready. So, we parked there, we had water, we had electric, we had sewer at our you know, availability. So that's where we camped the year of 1995 buck season. That was the first year we did not camp on mm -hmm. the mountain. Right. So, you know, we would drive up and my father-in-law, Big Al's dad, and his uh, next to oldest brother, mm -hmm. Denny, was there. I was there, Brandon was there, I don't think Dink was there. I don't think. I don't think he was there. And uh, and Sonny wasn't there. No, no, they wasn't. It was just Dad, Denny, you and me, and mm -hmm. Brandon. Right. And uh, so, if I remember correctly, we went up on Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, Got things set up. I don't even know if we've done any scouting or anything that year. And I can't remember the days or whatever, but I'm going to let Big Al do his reminiscing here of about us going up the mountain, the spot he picked, and what transpired. Well, actually, like I said, I can't remember what day it was either. Uh, the night before, I, will, I do remember this, the night before, we were sitting at the table with the bus, and I said, shoot, I'm going to mark my shells. I put uh, two for a spike, you know, three point, four point, all the way up to ten point. And uh, my nephew Brandon was talking about it. He goes, you're numbering your shells? I said, yeah, you never know when you're going to get lucky. And I put them in my pocket for the next day. And uh, we started out walking up the mountain. Uh, nothing was standing out to me at the time. And then uh, we started around the curve where my dad's holler was and I uh, started up the hill a little bit and my brother Daniel looked around and said, man, this looks like a good place to hunt. And I got thinking, well, he ain't going to hunt here, maybe I will. So uh, he goes, nah, he goes, I think I'm going up the ridge. I said, well, Daniel said, if you was to hunt in here, I said, where would you hunt at? And he, we was going up this way on the, the trail and off to the left, he goes, I'd hunt right under that pine tree right there. I said, well, I think I'm going to hunt here. So, 
we said good luck to everybody and went out and sat down, cleaned me out a spot. And uh, I hadn't been there very long, and I saw my dad walking up the mountain. And, uh, you know, he took his time and he turned and he went up his collar. And I watched him as he goes in the way the hill round, mountain rounds, he went like right underneath it. And I'm like, well, he'll be up there in his spot. Well, I just happened to look over on that hill and I seen this deer walking across. I was like, man. Uh, it's time I was shooting a uh, Marlin 336C, I believe is what it is. And uh, put the scope on it and I was like, oh, that's a buck. And I was probably shooting maybe a hundred and some yards away. And I pulled down on him and I said, no, 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 he's walking around towards me. I'm just going to wait. So I let the hammer down and... Uh, it took forever, it seemed like. But then I heard something walking because, you know, it was dry. And I'm like, oh, here he comes. I thought he was coming to the top of the bridge. So I turned around and got ready and just happened to look down and out of the corner of my eyes see one standing down there. And here he comes around the, the hill. The hill's like right here. And he come out that far and stopped. And uh, I couldn't get a real good shot on his shoulder. So I put the, the crosshairs between his shoulder and his neck and uh, took my time to gun crack bam he fell I was like oh yeah man I just got me a rack buck first rack buck I ever killed and you was only 14 and I was 14 and uh, started down to him and I seen him doing this number like nope you're not getting away and I shot him again and then uh, he was laying there and his head was twitching I shot him I think I missed him the third shot and my dad was coming up to her. He goes, what are you shooting at? I said, this buck? He goes, he's down. I said, yeah. I said, he's dead. And uh, dad walked up the hill and got close to him. He goes, yep. He goes, that's the one I just saw. I said, what? He goes, yeah. As I was walking up uh, to where I was sitting, he goes, I saw him coming around the hill. He goes, I thought I'd let you take a shot at him. <laughs> so I'm not for sure if that actually took place. But, uh, yeah, he, he come right around through there surprised me. If I hadn't looked down, he'd probably walk past me. But uh, that that was a great year because I remember after I harvested him, I took him down to the bottom of the hill. My dad said, well, he goes, you wait for me. We'll go into lunch. I'm like, okay. Well, he hollered at me. He goes, go on, take him on down. I'm like, okay, I will. So, um, and that was back in the days. We didn't use radios or nothing. So right. if somebody shot, you were guessing who it was. Exactly. So, uh, this guy coming around the hill, uh, a hunter did, and he come down to me. I'm I'm covered in blood, and he said, uh, "Hey, buddy, you see anything?" I said, "No, just this." And I rushed over and grabbed the deer's head and pulled it up. And he goes, "Man, that's nice." He goes, "Where'd you kill it?" I said, "Up here on the mountain." I didn't tell him exactly where I was. So he turned, he walked from down the holler, and then uh, that's about the time my dad hollered at me, and so I hooked to him. And Hauled him down to the truck, and gosh, I can't remember. Uh, did we hang him in we the hung, tree? We hung him in the tree. Yeah, we did. We sure did. Even though we didn't camp there, we, we still hung him in, in the, the tree. tree. Exactly. Now, the thing was, all this went on. I had left Alvin, me and Denny and Brandon had left, and we were going out to the ridge that I hunt on now, which was my brother in law Denny's ridge. That's where he always hunted. And, uh, what he would do, he would hunt out on the ridge, and I would drop to the right-hand side, watching down in the hollow, and the other hillside across. So me and Brandon did that. Then he got in the middle of the hollow like he normally does, and we heard you shoot. Yeah. But again, we didn't know if it was you, if it was Dad, or whoever, because back then there were hunters in the woods. Yeah, there was. But me and Brandon was sitting there, and on the other hillside. Again, I had my 30 out six. Brand had his 410 single shot with slugs. I see a deer come and I scoped it. And I seen it was a spike. And back then we didn't care if it was legal. We were shooting Shoot it, it. Exactly. And, and we still. I mean, we kind of hold to that still today. Mm -hmm. We may wait until the last minute before we would shoot a spike. But uh, back then we didn't care. And Brandon, being four or 15 years old, this would have been his first deer hunt, first deer. So I told Brandon, I said, now, if he keeps coming straight, he's going to come into the hollow and he's going to walk up. And the way he was headed, he was walking right up to us. 
I said, when he gets up here across the hall and up starts up the hill towards us, if you can get a shot on him, you shoot him. Hey, well, the spike must have heard me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, he was too far to really hear me. Mm -hmm. But he must he must have sensed what was <laughs> going to happen. But he ended up, instead of coming all the way down into the hollow, he turned to his right, about halfway on that hillside over there, and started going away from me and Brandon. And I told Brandon, I knew that it was too far of a shot for the 410. At least I think it was. I mean, I know it was well over a 100-yard shot. Right. And I said, I'm going to shoot my 30 out 6 I'm going I'm to get him. So I ended up shooting, and I hit him, and he took off running, and he went into a little swag, disappeared on me. So Brandon and I get up, and we go down the hall and hightail it up the other side. And the scene where he jumped, where I'd shot, and we started finding blood. And we followed that blood over to where it went in that swag. And then we found it going up the other hillside into that thicket over where that 70-year-old clear cut was. Right. And me and Brandon searched and searched. We, we both ran into other hunters over there. And we searched and searched and never could find it. We lost the blood trail. We turned around and started back out. And where we had come in up onto that flat, standing right on the edge was that spike standing right there. Mm -hmm. And we wasn't 50, 60 yards from that spike. And I don't know why I didn't say, Brandon, shoot. Right. I just pulled up my 30 out 6 and I shot and he dropped. Well, we get over, Jared's, or Brandon's standing right there, and I said, okay, I'm going to show you how you got to. <laughs> I got a deer. I had back then I was chewing tobacco, I think. Yeah. I might have been dipping, I can't remember. But whatever. I had tobacco in my mouth. And I started I, I looked to see where I'd hit that deer. Well, I had gut shot that deer. I don't know if it was the first shot, because I, I can't remember if I took a second shot at him when he was running. But oh, uh, I had gut shot that deer. And so when I started working him and I opened him up, I started coughing and gagging. Denny is over on the other ridge, and I could see him because he had looked over after that last shot. Mm -hmm. He had looked over, and he was over busting out laughing because I was gagging and gagging. <laughs> and I finally got that snuff or tobacco out and uh, finished, you know, uh, gutting the deer. Showed Brandon how to gut it. And then uh, I drug it out, Brandon carried my rifle, and I know we got back to camp and everything. And then you let Brandon, the next day we went out, right. I think, you let him use your 30-30. Right. And we hunted in the, the, the trail that we walked up, he hunted in that curve mm -hmm. where that little, where that log, had, that tree had fallen over, and there was a little hole. Yep. And he had hunted there, and there's some pictures in this video, especially at the end. If you watch this all the way to the end, just don't stop when the music starts playing. There's pictures of these deer, us mm -hmm. with these deer, Brandon sitting there in that hole, right. looking up at the tree at squirrels <laughs> instead of watching down the hall. Right. But, uh, you know, Brandon never took into hunting. I don't think he went the next year at all. No, he didn't. And he just, he told me he just wasn't interested. And, you know, uh, that kind of upset me because I wanted my sons to follow me. Now, Jared's followed me in my footsteps of hunting, and he's eat up with it like crazy. Uh, but I started Jared a little bit younger yeah. uh, than I did uh, Brandon. And I was just going by what Dad had said. He was like, I don't take the boys deer hunting until they're 13. Yep. And uh, so I started Jared off a little younger. but And that was hunting here. We didn't oh, yeah, go to we, camp those years. Yeah, we hunting across the river. But, uh, you know, that was 1995. He, he killed that nine point. You've got him mounted. I got his head mounted, yep. Uh, what did you call him? Fred, uh, Fred. Fred, yeah. You've probably seen the videos when he's in Washington getting ready to fly out here. Every, every uh, that you've done about a week, uh, two week video of you getting ready yeah. with them two, both of those deer, Fred and the other George, one. George, yeah. George uh, hanging on the wall. George is a different story altogether. That, oh, I can't yeah. remember what year that was. I don't either. Is that the six-point? <coughs> yeah, it's a six-point on the club. 
Oh, okay. I thought it was the six points you got that Tuesday that no, no, or no. that Monday morning that Jared couldn't be there when he was up at camp. Remember no, the one I yeah. came over? Yeah, no, this one was, uh, I think it was opening day on buck season. Okay. But, uh, you know, I told you I had this diary and I was going to keep you up on, you know, memories of hunts past and we're up to 95. I will tell you, 96, nobody got a buck. No. I, I know we probably hunted up at camp in 96. Mm -hmm. 97, I know we was at camp because that was the year Denny was there mm -hmm. and Denny, I can't remember what day it was in 97, but he had shot at a six point. You know, that's the reason why we've yeah. nicknamed that ridge that I hunt on Six Point Ridge. Right. There's been a bunch of six points killed on that ridge. Mm -hmm. Then he had shot at a six point, whatever day it was, and he missed. Mm -hmm. He yeah. thought he missed. Because the next day, I go up with him, and I sat in that saddle between where he sits and where <coughs> Dad used to sit. The one that has the recliner, we yeah. call it, the chair one, like, yeah. in the side of the hill. And I sat there, and I had a six point coming up the point, and I scoped him. He didn't even know I was there. He wasn't. He was in bow range when I shot, mm -hmm. and he dropped right there. Well, when I went over and looked at him, I'd hit him right behind the shoulder, he dropped. He had a bullet hole in his neck, mm -hmm. and when Denny come over, he heard me shoot, he comes up, he says, that's the six point I shot at. I said, that's the six point you shot. Mm -hmm. I said, you didn't miss. I said, you grazed him, or got him through the neck, but not in the vital, you know, didn't get an artery or nothing. Because uh, you can see perfect bullet hole through the neck. And uh, so and I end up tying my rope to him, dragging him out. Uh, and that's the one thing I remember. That that rack is hanging on one of the plaques in, in the living room in there. And I've got that story wrote on the back of it. <laughs> but then we went 98, didn't kill a buck. 99, we didn't kill a buck. No. And then the year 2000, Jared would have been... Uh, he was born in 85, 95, 2000. So he'd have been 15. 15 yeah. uh, he killed his first buck, and that's in 2000. Wow. And I'll do another Memories of Hunts Pass with Jared on that one. But uh, that's when we was hunting the old hunting club property. That's when we did yeah. not go to camp. Right. For a few years, we hunted the old hunting club property. And he may have been uh, in 90... Let me think here. Probably 97, 98, 99. That's <coughs> probably when we started hunting, hunting over there. I believe it is. Because we wasn't seeing nothing up, up, up at camp. Because they'd had those real liberal doe seasons. Yes. You just go buy your tag. And uh, we started not seeing the deer. We'd go up there and sit all week, five of us, mm -hmm. and not see a deer one. Not a one. So we stopped going up there. We started hunting over on the hunting lease, not the one we're on now, another one, because we saw deer all the time. Yep. So I think in 1997, Jared had been 13. Mm -hmm. That's when I started hunting him over there because we were seeing deer. Now, of course, nobody got any deer. No, no one got Until 2000 when he killed his very first one. And right. like I said, I'll do a Memories of Hunts Past with Jared, get him to where I can sit down with him and let him reminisce and recall everything that happened because I've got a few notes in here about it but basically knowing that that was when he killed his first deer mm -hmm. and he was 15 years old but uh, well I'll let him tell that story so uh, we appreciate everybody watching uh, j, j True Outdoor Adventures I know uh, several people have liked these memories of the hunts past and now remember in 2010, we started J&J &J True Outdoor Adventures. So when we get to 2009, Memories of the Hunt's Past is over. Yeah. The only thing we can do, or the only thing we can tell you is start watching our videos right. from 2010, maybe 2011. I think 2011 is when we got started, really. Okay. Because uh, we got the, the Bowtech Assassins in 2011. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, that's when we started J&J &J True Outdoor Adventures. So that's when our first archery videos, camp videos all started. 
Right. So, you know, uh, when we get to 2000 and Jerry reminisces, we've got about another 10 years to go. And then after that, you'll have to watch J and J Two Outdoor Adventures from 2011 on up to see the memories of the hunts past, mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're all on video now. Right. These these hunts, we never had video equipment. No. Uh, if we did, it would have been them big old VHS type cameras. Exactly. And uh, those were expensive back in those days. Oh yeah. And uh, it would have been. Forget taking a rifle. You got to take a video <laughs> camera and video somebody because right. you're not going to be able to hunt. Exactly. But uh, like I said, we appreciate you watching JJ Two Outdoor Adventures. Stay tuned for more. Uh, bow season. See, squirrel season starts tomorrow, right. but I don't think we're going to be out. We mm -hmm. might, but I don't think so. Uh, Jared's got a camper that we got to go help him with, uh, and so we probably won't get to go squirrel hunting. Of course, it's warm. Now, this morning, yeah. it was 48 degrees this morning. Uh, you're talking about somebody wanting to go sit in a tree stand. Exactly. But uh, bow season comes in in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll start having our uh, bow hunting videos out. So just stay tuned. Again, we appreciate you. And as we like to say, see, see you in the, in the woods. woods. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.